Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I want to show you three ways to retime your clips in Premiere Pro. Uh, and stick around right to the end because I'm going to show you a little bonus tip that you can really squeeze some extra slow-mo out of your clip no matter what the frame rate is. So let's get into it. Now the first thing I want to say is these three tools all kind of do the same thing but they do work quite differently and there's no wrong or right way or wrong or right place to use these kind of clips. You know, I think it's just up to you as the user to decide the best way to do it. I do know that a lot of people get kind of stuck into one way of like retiming things though. And then, you know, you just kind of always use that way, but they are really different. And I feel like you would really use them for different things. So let's jump into it. So the first one is your bog standard kind of speed and duration change. So if you right click on the clip, you get this speed and duration come up here. And here you can basically just change the clip. So say I want it to be 50%, press okay. And now my clip is 50%. That is really basically the most simplest way you can retime something. But the problem with retiming it this way is you don't really have a lot of control over certain sections or anything like that, but maybe that's fine. Maybe you'd want it like that. Maybe you just want to make the clip 50% and that's it. So if I just undo that though, the second one is by using time remapping. So if I go into this little section here on the side, and hold option and scroll with my mouse, you'll see it extends this area. You can also just click on the top here of the clip and drag it up and down. You wanna be able to click on this little effects button here and go to time remapping and then speed. And now this line comes up that represents the speed of your clip. So if I drag this up, you can see it's telling me it's going up to 130. If I drag this down, you can see it's going down to 50. Now that is 50%. And this way of retiming something is great because you can have a lot of control and say you want to go to a certain section and do a little speed ramp. Say I want to go here and then speed it up to 150. You press P on the keyboard, click on the little, let me try again. You press P on the keyboard, click on the section you want to go fast from and drag it up. I can add a little speed ramp in there as well. And now when it gets to that section, it should speed up. So this way is great because although it can be quite fiddly at times and especially because that bar can be quite sensitive, you can really be moving things up and down and sometimes it can get really fiddly. It's great because you have a lot of control over which section you want to go faster, which section you want to go slower. And uh, yeah, it's just a great way to basically control your clip a lot. Um, so I'm just going to undo all of that, get it back to 100%. Now the, the last way is great if you don't really care how fast or slow the clip's going necessarily, but you wanna squeeze it into a certain section. So if you go to the left-hand side of the screen here, you see the ripple edit tool. Now behind that, if you hold option on a Mac, and I'm not quite sure what it would be on a Windows, but basically if you know you use basically your scrolling option, you should be able to get to this, the rate stretch tool. You can also, a quick way of doing it is if you just click R on your keyboard, it brings it up, a little shortcut, and the rate stretch tool basically stretches the clip using uh, retiming, but it doesn't crop it in any way. So basically say I want this clip to be 15 seconds and I don't mind how much I speed it up by, I can just drag this clip now to 15 seconds and it says on the bottom there how fast it is. So it's 144%. If I press play, I can see how it's gone really fast, but it's kept the same kind of timing of the clip. So nothing's been cropped everything's still in there, it's just sped up. And this is great because of that simple fact that you can basically squeeze your clip down, condense it, keeping the, you know, making it slower or faster. But you know, if you really know where you want your clip to be in and out, you can kind of keep those in and out sections. So that is really amazing as well. And you know, you can basically slow it back down, say if I move it down here, now it's 57%. This is great to play with, this is a great tool. So as you can see though, these tools are all really different and I would use them in really different ways. I often know, all right, I'm gonna do this, so I need this kind of tool. You know, Like if I just want this clip to be a bit slower in slow motion and I don't mind where it ends and starts, I'll use that first kind of method. If I know I wanna go in to do something like a speed ramp, I'll use the second method. So yeah, I use them for all kind of different things. There's no really right or wrong way to do it. It just depends on the situation. And as I mentioned, I'll give you a little bonus tip now. So this clip was shot at 60 frames per second. So the last little bonus tool I was gonna give you as well is how to use optical flow. So you can slow down your clip a lot slower than you normally would 
without seeing the frames. So if you know much about frames and slow motion, if you shot something at 60 frames per second and your timeline is 24, you should only really be able to slow it down by about 40%, right? But with optical flow, you can go a bit lower than that. And what happens is, is it kind of digitally glues the frames together to be able to slow the clip down a lot more. So the clip here is 100% and uh, slow it down to 20%. So ideally I should have shot this around 120 frames per second to be able to slow it down that much. But if you go into time interpolation here at the bottom, you've got optical flow, select that. What you might have to do before you do this though is render and replace the clip out, which if you right click it's here, I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again. And also make sure there's no color grades directly on the clip. So I've added the adjustment layer with my color grade on there. But now if you look, this clip is moving super slow. 20% of the frame rate I shot it. So uh, look at that, and you can't really see the frames at all. So Premiere Pro has done a great job of slowing that clip down. So there you go guys, optical flow, check that out if you really want to get your clips going a lot slower than you should be really. Thanks a lot, please give me a like and a subscribe if you want to see more of this content and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.